Good morning and welcome to another video by Antique Serena. Hi. My name is Walter Neil. You, I'm Sandra. You should all know <laughs> who this is. Well, Sandra here, and there's the beautiful one in the back. We're having a day out. We're going to go down to Splot Market car boot sale. We're going to uh, see if we can buy a few little bits. I got an entire boot full of vinyl that we're going to put down the auction. Look at the baby looking. <laughs> So, yeah, we're going to have a full day. I've got to pick up the two signed books that I forgot to collect uh, last week that I won. So I'm going to show you those books as well. And we're just going to have a day out. And we're going to take photos and films throughout the day and spice roll into one nice special day, uh, special video uh, that I'll probably air on New Year's Day. So. Sorry, I had something in my eye. I got an eyelash or something in there. We'll get uh, some footage from Splot. We'll see if I can find anything. It's a week to Christmas. Is it a week or less? Eight days now. Eight more sleeps. It's a. It's a, just over a week to Christmas, so I'm not expecting a huge amount from the markets, but we'll go down here. We'll see what we can get. I want to go down the auction, put this lot in. I got to pick up the lot I forgot. So, and we're gonna just have a day. We might do some Christmas shopping, we might do some charity shopping, we might do some antique fairs, and of course we're going to have food. Sure, I'll put right. photos in of Sandra going, ah, with a burger, don't worry. <laughs> we don't do that, do we love? Gracie Bell, do you want to say hi? Say hi. Wave, wave, wave. Hi. She's in there watching Peppa Pig. You going to wave? Hi. Hasn't she grown? Right, so we'll leave it there for a minute, guys. We'll see you soon when we get out to Splot. Smile. Haha, <laughs> Ninja Turtle. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the records before I take them into the auction, which is here now. But they're all falling up the car, so I got to try and get them out of them falling everywhere. There is all sorts in here. There's Apple label. There's um, Queen. There's Rolling Stones. Uh, Michael Jackson. Why do they keep jumping on the floor? So this lot now is all going into the auction. One lot, no reserve. Okay, so here's what we got. We got a beautiful Art Nouveau brass and iron coat hook. Solid bronze sundial. Sam, can you get the bits out of my bag, please? I forgot them. This, I think, is Waterford crystal. It's beautifully cut. Look at that stem. Beautiful quality. That lamp is absolutely gorgeous with this bronze fittings. The WMF at the back. Hotel way. We got a bit of Korean pottery. There's a couple of bits in there for you. This is nice, it's a cast iron lamp, believe it or not. Really nice early one. Got some Christian Dior silver paperweight uh, earrings. Pool pottery Bambi. This sign is gorgeous, enamel sign, it's from Poland. It's got a little bit of way on the edges. But it's really nice from Poland. We got a St. Ives pottery dish. We got a load of cast iron Michelin men. They're not old, but they are nice and quirky. I got a really nice little coat hook. Bear with me. Right. Little coat hook there with a the stag in that. That's quite nice. I've had a nice little brass door knocker looks to be some sort of Shakespeare and character or something like that and I've had 258 solid silver three pences and a Spanish porcelain duck so that's my mornings by him what do you think we're looking at all these pieces individually later on at the end of the video where you get to see the prices and what they are. Okay. 
doen tijdens zo fiets. What you found beautiful? Okay, so um, I'm windswept. <laughs> yeah, really cold out there. Beautiful looking, but I tell you what, windy and cold. But we've loved it. We've had a cracking day. We've had an ice cream. Somebody's had donuts. Uh, we've had food on the beachfront. Mm. You know, we really have had a lovely day. Uh, we're gonna head back now, so stick around and you get to see all the stock I've bought in detail. Can bring you your Oh yeah, and I just found twenty pound on the floor. We were walking back to the car. And I found this on the floor. One and a half grams of nine carat gold. Totally crumpled, totally mashed. It's been run over by cars. But at 15, 16 pound a gram, it's 20 quid. Somebody just give me 20 quid back. And there's my two books that I'll show you in the house. We've picked them up from the auction house. Um, so I'll show you those in the house so you get to see those as well. So all in all, we're having a fabulous day. See you soon. Bye. Okay, good morning. It's the following day now. I'm back in uh, my shop and I've got my little purchases to show you today. So we're going to take a little look at what I've bought, tell you the prices and what I hope to achieve for them. Got a nice variety, really have. Um, so we just want to get started. First of all, we have this beautiful, very impressive looking table lamp or candelabra lamp if you like. I think this is a conversion, you know. It would have been candles originally because these haven't got electric fittings in the sides. So you've got brass or bronze mounting and nice glass. I don't think it's British. I think it's probably continental or maybe American even. Um, it's from the style of the plug as well. It's not a British plug. So we've got a really nice, attractive lamp. Now it needs a bit of attention as in it all needs tightening up, it's loose and this needs tightening. I either need to take it off and have it as a candlestick or get it rewired. I haven't decided what to do yet. I may sell it as a candlestick or I may convert it back into a full size working lamp. But it cost me £20. It's a spectacular looking object. It really is. If I can I'll splice in some photos of it in a minute and you'll see just what I mean. But a beautiful looking thing and as a lamp I think you're probably talking more 85 95 pound once it's rewired and tightened up and cleaned uh, as a candlestick you're probably talking probably 60 70 pounds but such a decorative piece this brass and glass really works well together and it's just a lovely shape so that was really nice This next piece is one of a few pieces I bought off one dealer. We have an enamel sign. Um, now it's got some way in the corners. A little minor way in the corners. This is an original one. This isn't a reproduction in my opinion. It's got some good way. It's just a really nice thing. Now obviously it's not British. Um, the gentleman who bought it off said it was a Polish sign, Pol uh, possibly a street sign, but it's really nice. I love the colour, you know, this beautiful blue and the opaque. Um, now I paid him £25 for the sign. So all in all, that is a really good buy. I would like to, but I'm going to ask probably £65, £70 for it on the website and see where it goes. 
Um, the reason I was unsure of what I paid is because I paid him £40 for this and a selection of modern or reproduction Michelin men, all in cast iron. You'll see them in the photograph on this store. I'll show you them now. And was well aware these were new. There was no age to them, but they were really collectible and cute. So you've got a group of cast iron Michelin men. There's two, five of them in total. And I paid him £15 for the five. So what's that? Three quid a piece. I don't think that's a lot of money. I know they're reproduction ones. Um, but I still see that an easy double my money. I'm going to ask £30, £35 for the set of five of these and they're going to look amazing in the cabinet on display which means then the sign on the website owes me like a tenner. So that's a really good little thing. I'll use a bit of profit off these to balance against the sign um, but I did like them. But I'm not being funny. Did you see his stall? I'll show it again now. He had some weird stuff. Not all, some original, some reproduction. But I tell you what, some of it was questionable taste. Let's leave it at that. Right, next we have three pieces that are only £160. I know, a lot of money, I know. You don't always have to dig deep to make profits, as I showed with my bargain hunt video the other day. You can buy stuff for £2.50 and sell it for £300 or £400. Right? But I don't mind laying out some money when it's stuff I really want. We start off with this beautiful solid brass and cast iron or wrought iron Art Nouveau uh, coat rack. Really nice. Love this beautiful heart finial on the side there. I love these sort of... Well, I just love the shape on them. It's got a good colour, good look. It's a good, heavy, solid brass uh, coat hook, and that's going to be about 45, 50 pounds, no problem at all, maybe a fraction more. It wouldn't surprise me if I end up putting this on the website for about 60, 65 pounds. Um, it's well worth it, it's a good quality piece with a nice design, um, and I love it. So we've already got a big chunk of our money back. Next piece needs a bit needs tightening up. The uh, stag head is uh, loose, um, but that's just tightening the screw up on the back here. So we have what well, can I only assume is a little coat hook. So you'd mount that on your wall, like so, and then you've got two little coat hooks to hang your coats. Solid brass again, got a little bit of age to it, nice bit of colour to the stag. Um, and that came in the 160. Well, that I can tell you now, I'm going to tighten that up, and that's going to go on eBay for 18 pounds. Um, it's going to sell pretty quick. I don't doubt that one bit. So already we we close to about 75, 80 pound back on my job lot, which means the next lot owes me 80 pounds. And what we have next is a few hundred. I think it's about 358 solid silver three pence pieces. Now. Try as I may, um, he wanted a pound each originally when uh, he was when I picked them up, and he said he's been getting a pound each all day long because people have been buying them to put them in their um, Christmas pudding because that's what you used to do. You used to put these solid silver threepences or sixpences in your Christmas pudding, um, but that there now owes me eighty pound, but it scraps at more than that, so it's not a problem. And to be honest with you. They may end up going in my silver pot. So I'll pull back what I can off the uh, other pieces, so 80 quid, and this little job lot now is gonna be put away into my silver pile, and I'll deal with it in another 10 or 20 years. <laughs> okay, moving on. Now this, I really rate. I gotta have a good look at it later. I've literally just picked it up out of the bag, but I think this is Waterford Crystal. And we have a large bowl. 
beautiful quality really nice look at that stem look at the cutting on that spectacular beautiful cut in again all over the bowl this is fine cut crystal now I'm almost confident this is Waterford um, let's see I'm gonna have to give it a good wash give it a clean have a look for a signature uh, but a bowl like that if it's unsigned it's gonna be 30 40 pound if I can find a Waterford sticker or uh, Waterford signature on there or find the pattern on replacements.com that's the, the website I use to find all my patterns this is worth looking up uh, then you're talking hundred pound, hundred and twenty pound. Beautiful thing, cost me a fiver. Just has a beautiful, heavy cut crystal bowl with a beautiful note like that or stem. You know, for a fiver, it was a gift. Really was something quite special. Again, I'll put photographs of everything in after or during the film. Next piece I forgot to actually add in when I done the little video clip in the car. This I found this in the bag uh, afterwards and forgot about it. And we got a nice little piece of agate, a nice slab of agate. Look at that! Look at the colours on that. Absolutely spectacular. Now this owes me three pound. Now I can tell you if you went to a crystal shop or a dealer who specialises in crystals and amethysts and you know, geodes and things like that. You'd probably, for a size like this, be talking probably 40 or 50 pounds. Uh, for me, it's gonna retail out about 15, 18 pounds in the shop. Um, but it cost me three pounds. It's a real nice thing, it's so decorative. And honestly, the quality of it is stunning. Um, I'll probably ask 20 quid for it, and that's a good little profit. And if it don't sell, to be honest with you, I don't mind. But wouldn't that make a lovely little bookend uh, agate bookend. If I had two of them, I'd sell them as bookends and I'd be asking more like 80 quid. But yeah, real nice quality, lovely piece of agate. Love all the veins and the lines. Three quid, it was a gift. Next piece I love. We have a bronze sundial. Really nice. Now I'm not 100% on how this type works. I think you point it north and then wherever the sun is on the on the dial, the shadow will re reflect on these numbers telling you the time of day. That's how I think it works. I'm not 100%, um, but you have to set it at a certain degrees and a certain setting on the compass, I believe. But this is bronze. It's got a nice bit of age to it. It's in lovely condition. Now, I paid £15. Pounds. Um, I haven't researched any of this stuff yet, but I would like to think a piece of that size in bronze in that condition is going to be £75 of anybody's money on the website. It's just so beautiful looking, so decorative, and to be honest with you, I'd put that on a desk. I wouldn't put that back in the garden. That would sit on a desk and just look amazing as a little curio on an office desk or something for me. Um, but it's a nice thing, it's got good patina, good verdigris, lovely, I just love it right up my street of what I love to buy and what I love to keep. <laughs> so this one, I may end up keeping this one because I really do like it, but we'll see. Time will tell, um, but just a nice bit of bronze. My price may change when I do research. It could end up going up or down on this one if I sell it. Next piece we have is, I believe, a bit of Korean way. Um, it's a ginger jar, it's 19th century, probably mid 19th century. Hand painted. Very typical Chinese shape, but I think this one might be Korean. Um, yeah, it's got the little mark there in the underneath. There's the rim. Could be Chinese porcelain, you know, that paste is white enough. However, 50 pence. Now, if I splice in a few images of similar pieces, that, well, they're asking on eBay, they're asking crazy money on some of these. This one gentleman's asking like 300 pound for one of these. Um, I think he'll still be asking it in 10 or 20 years, 
but either way uh, for 50 pence I see that an easy 20 to 40 pound easy no problem at all um, normally you find these they got cracks everywhere so it's a nice object and for 50 pence that was a gift Next little group of items I bought off one dealer. Um, he gave me a job lot price of £45. Um, I gave him £50 a ton to keep the change. He's been a very good dealer. I bought off him. Every time I've gone to Cardiff, I have bought off him and I have made really good money off him. <clears throat> His stuff is what I normally buy. The stuff I bought off him yesterday wasn't anything I was jumping up and down for. Um, however, it's nothing wrong with it. It's good gear but it's not the standout stuff I normally get off him, but I wanted to buy something off him to help him over Christmas time. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you what I've had off him. The purchase price was 45, but I gave him 50. So it owes me 50 quid. We start off with a pair of heavy silver plated brass jugs. Now they may not sound a lot to you when I say that, these are hotel wear, so they're really heavy, good quality. You just lift them up like that. So they're real good design. You know, they got a little lip coming up on the back there, you hold the handle, and they do actually open, no problem at all for pouring. They buy a German company called WMF, and do not ask me to try and pronounce it. Not gonna happen, but there you are, there's the WMF mark. And they're in good condition. There's actually no wear on them, very minor scratching, no plate wear, nothing. Now I'd like to think a pair of jugs like that is gonna be about 40 pound. Gotta be 20 quid a piece, no problem whatsoever. For WMF, that weight, look at the design, real good design, good shape. So my money's almost back by there. Put it. When I'm mourning, it's because it's not the stuff I'm used to having off this gentleman. But it's still good gear. Next we have a studio pottery plate, or base of a jardinier maybe. Maybe this was the base and you had a plant pot or something on top of it. Um, this here is not a crack. That is a firing floor. It doesn't go all the way through. Now, I don't buy a lot of studio pottery. However, this is St. Ives the home of Bernard Leach and so forth. So, what's it worth? 30 pound, no problem at all being St. Ives. 25, 30 pound, even with this little factory floor here, still a real nice thing. Would have been nice if it didn't add some shape and it was a vase. Next piece I add off him, this is my favorite out of them all. It's the most unusual. We have a very early Wells cast iron lamp. Now this base is cast iron. It's all engraved. We had a laugh. Somebody down there tried telling him this was a miner's lamp. Could you imagine going underground with a naked flame here? Kaboom. Um, it's nice. It's still got its original brass or bronze top and his wheel. It's still got what looks to be the original wick inside. It's a bit seized, it won't come up. But a really interesting lamp. Now I'm gonna do a bit of research on that. I've no idea what they pull, um, but I've never had one before. It's gotta be early. Just look at that patina on the cast iron. And to be honest, with you, I've never seen anything like it. Um, so I've no idea what it's gonna be worth. I will splice in pictures of anything sold similar I can find if we can get a price. Wells and Co. Manchester. So it's an English lamp. I think it's like an engineer's lamp or something like that. It's got a little tree or something coming up the front here. It's quite a nice little object. I just love unusual. And that was in there as well. And let's be honest, I would think I'd have guessed 30 to 40 pounds for that. That's just my gut feeling. So we'll see. If 
Final piece of him in this 50 pound is a pair of Christian Dior earrings. Now he assures me these are original, not copies. I wouldn't have a clue, I'll be honest with you. Um, however, what I will say is it didn't matter. I was just giving him a Christmas bonus, if you like. Um, if they turn out the copies, the copies, but I'm gonna do some research on these. Um, if they are Christian Dior earrings, I would imagine they're gonna be about 15, 20 pound, 30 pound for them in their box. So interesting little things. And a couple of cheap pieces of porcelain. They had a Spanish porcelain duck. It is ladro, uh, but it's got the early scratched in mark, not the printed mark. It's almost like a scraffito mark. And I had this beautiful little pool pottery Bambi deer with loads and loads of writing. This one's actually artist signed, which is really unusual. Pool England um, by B. Linley Adams. I don't think I've ever had one that's actually artist signed before. So they actually rated it. That's gonna make a big difference, I think, to the actual selling price. Um, but we're yeah, five pound, one pound. Both in good condition. The selling price of the Ladro is about £15 being Ladro, if it was Neo it would be half that. The selling price of the Pool Deer we're going to splice in as the film is made because i got to do some research. If it didn't have the artist signature and it was just a Pool Deer I would think again around £15, £20. But we'll see if that artist signature makes a difference. This is my final lot. Which is just a little brass door knocker and this come in with the bronze sundial as part of the deal this one owes me a fiver now I do well on these I really do um, it's probably Shakespearean a house or something like that I can't read it it's a bit worn um, these normally something to do with Shakespeare or Charles Dickens or something like that, these door knockers, they're very common like that. Um, either way, it cost me a fiver, it's going to go out for about 12 or 15 pounds. Uh, but this one will probably end up going to Sandra to on her eBay. Um, we'd buy little small brass knickknacks and things like that for Sandra. I don't know, that's the, that's the stock. That's all the stock I've got to show you there. Um, here's the pair of books that I bought. Now these were supposed to have been in the Christmas Day special where you saw the start to finish. Uh, I chose the lots, you saw me choose my lots in auction, bid on my lots in auction, research my lots in auction, collect them and then look at the lots. These were forgotten. These were the ones I won and forgot. There was a pair of them. I was offered these at the car boot sale four or five weeks ago for £200. I turned them down. Uh, they appeared in the auction on no reserve and I bought them for £45. Now I gotta check it out, but the gentleman who was selling them to me is a house clearance man and he was adamant that these are artist signed. Now I'm not confident if they're artist signed or facsimile signed. Bear with me, I am looking for it. There. So he thinks that is artist signed and it could very well be. I'm gonna have to look it up. Have a look under an eyeglass and check other books. But it does look, bear with me a second, let's have a look. We'll find out now. They look facsimile to me. They don't look artist signed to me, I'll be honest with you. All right, but we're gonna have to look to find out whether other books like this have got that signature, uh, just to confirm. But either way, this was a very famous cartoonist, and I have two of his books fully illustrated. 
and he used to do cartoons for the newspapers. £45 a pair of those, they were good enough. That's about it. Um, since I'm releasing this one on New Year's Day, uh, I wish you all a happy new year. I hope 2021 is better than 2020 for everybody. We're not starting it very well here in Wales. We're in lockdown already. Um, irrelevant to what's going on in the world, I just hope you and your family are safe. I want to thank everybody for your support over the last few years and just say how much I appreciate it. I really do. And other than that, just stay well, stay safe. Happy hunting and I'll see you all throughout 2021.